If your air pressure system utilizes nitrogen tanks, then you know the cost, labor, and headaches involved. This video is going to give you a plan of attack. We're first going to find our most expensive tank, which is the one that's flowing the most, and then we're going to locate the leaks. The goal here is to increase our protection and decrease our reliance on nitrogen by two-thirds. So let's get started. Each nitrogen tank holds 220 standard cubic feet of nitrogen. Check out our video titled, What is a Standard Cubic Foot? for more information. For a basic understanding, let's just think of this as a tank that holds 220 gallons of water. If it was holding 220 gallons of water and was leaking 10 gallons an hour, then it would last 22 hours. And if you got that leak down to just one gallon an hour, then it would last 220 hours. Now this is the same thing for a nitrogen tank, except our nitrogen tanks are measured in standard cubic feet instead of gallons. A nitrogen tank needs to be replaced before it is completely empty or it is not providing any protection to your air pressure system. A tank that is flat one third of the time is really just as bad as not having any tank at all. These fast flowing tanks need to be replaced once a day and are really a very expensive way to provide little to no protection to your air pressure system. So how do we find our worst tank? To start with, we need to go to each one of our tanks and measure our flow rate. To measure our flow, we need to install a 0 to 9.5 standard cubic feet an hour flow finder between the regulator and the cable. Make sure you install the flow finder with the arrow in the right direction. Use a flow gauge to take a reading at the flow finder. Refer to our video titled Using a Flow Gauge for more information. It is linked in the video description. Also use a digital pressure gauge to take a reading of your delivery pressure at the flow finder. Refer to our video titled Digital Pressure Gauge for more information. It is linked in the video description. Let's repeat these pressure and flow readings for all of our tanks. To start with, let's just do our 10 or 20 highest flowing tanks. These are going to be the ones that are replaced every day or every other day. If when you come to a tank it is already flat, then replace the tank and wait a minimum of 20 minutes before taking a pressure and a flow reading. This will give you enough time for your system pressure to get back up to equilibrium and will make sure that you have an accurate flow reading. After you've looked at the flow rate for all your tanks, let's pick out the one that is flowing the most. If you can find one flowing 5 center cubic feet an hour or more, this is a really good place to start leak locating. At 5 center cubic feet an hour, a tank will go flat in 44 hours, and so it really needs to be replaced every day. If you can get that number down to 1 standard cubic feet an hour, then the tank will last 9 days. Now that we have found our worst tank, we can leak locate. Here's a hint. The biggest leaks are the easiest to find. This example here has a four-way splice being fed by a nitrogen tank here. Step one is to take another flow and pressure reading at the tank. Then we do a zero leak projection. A zero leak projection, or ZLP, does not tell us where the leak is, but it will tell us where the leak is not and will dramatically reduce our area of search. Refer to our video titled Zero Leak Projection Calculation for details. It is linked in the video description. I'm going to do a quick zero leak projection here. Our input pressure is 3.2 psi. Our flow rate is 4 standard cubic feet an hour and our cable is a 1200 pair 24 gauge pulp cable which has a unit of resistance of 1.5. By entering this information into our zero leak projection we have an area of search of 533 feet. What this means is that our leak is no further than 533 feet away from our area of measurement. So if this is our area 533 feet from our area of measurement, then there's no point in looking in this manhole here or here because the leak we're looking for is not going to be there. If the splice is a three-way splice, then you need to do a separate zero leak projection with the pneumatic resistance of the lateral cable. There's a good chance that this lateral is an air core pick cable and will have less pneumatic resistance, so the area of search will be different. Now that we have our area of search, it's time to use some tracer gas. We will replace the nitrogen tank with a tracer gas tank by taking the regulator off of the nitrogen, off of the nitrogen tank and placing it onto our tracer gas tank along with the 3 8 inch tubing. To do this, you're probably going to need a reverse thread adapter for your tank. The tracer gas tank is a mix of hydrogen and nitrogen, and with our hydrogen detector, we can locate this mix of gas. The tracer gas should be no more than 5% hydrogen, and the tank should have a green label. Once we have our tracer gas set, we get to the most important part. We need to let it sit overnight and come back the next day. The biggest reason that tracer gas doesn't work is because you don't let it sit long enough. If the tank you are replacing is flat, 
make sure that the tracer gas is not flowing more than four standard cubic feet an hour. You want to still have gas in that tank the next day when you show up to do your leak locating. So here's the fun part. We're going to find that leak that nobody has found for the last 20 years. Without a hydrogen detector, finding these leaks was nearly impossible. And having the right tool is everything. Refer to our video titled Hydrogen Leak Detector for details. It is linked in the video description. Begin by putting the head of your detector near the manhole hook. If the detector doesn't start screaming in the red, then you have not found your leak. More than likely, the plug in the cable feeding the bee box is leaking. Open the bee box and sniff the area of the exposed pairs. If there is a plug on a riser, be sure to check the first splice case to see if that plug is leaking internally. The pick lateral cable that enters a building is another prime target. Sniff the area of the exposed pairs to find if the plug is leaking or missing. If your nitrogen tank is feeding a splice case with plugged interlacing, then the plug may be leaking. Depress the valve stem on the attached splice case downstream from the plug and take a reading for hydrogen. Most important here is to stay within the area of the zero leak projection. Popping lids down the street is a waste of time. I'm going to give you a hint. The leak is probably not in the manhole because if it was, you would have found it already. It might be up a duct in a section leak. If you locate gas coming from up a duct, it may not be worthwhile to fix this problem. In that case, we recommend moving the tank two or more manholes away further to the field. This puts a little more pneumatic resistance between your tank and the section leak, which will slow down the flow rate. Remember, our goal is to increase protection and decrease nitrogen use. If your tank is feeding an unfixable leak, then maintaining pressure is all you can do. And if that tank is flat one third of the time, then you are not providing any protection at all. Our goal is to get all of our tanks flowing less than one standard cubic foot an hour. Once you have accomplished this, you can get rid of your tank altogether and replace it with a flow bank. If you're out in the field and something just doesn't make sense and need a second opinion, give us a call. Chances are we have seen it before, and if not, then we will just be learning together. You can also check us out at airtalk.com.